Hello everyone, hope you're having a good day. Today we'll be taking a look at the other half of the Twisted and the Twilight DLC for Total War Warhammer 2. The Twisted and the Twilight comes out on December the 3rd, and once again the key was given to me by Creative Assembly, so huge thanks to them for that. Frot the Unclean is the latest Skaven Lord to come into Warhammer 2. Frot is one of the most twisted and ingenious master mutators of Clan Mulder, exploiting his success to gain a position as one of the Nine Lords of the Hell Pit. As a result of his contact with Pure Warp Zone, he uses in the experiments, Frot has slowly mutated over time, both physically and mentally. As one of the Nine Lords of the Hell Pit, Frot the Unclean starts in the northern reaches of the Empire, near Norska, Krakatrak and Kislev. I personally have only played around with this area a bit as chaos. Noble things at the start is you're already at war with the dwarfs of Krakadrak, who can be fairly tough faction to deal with early on as the armored dwarfs of the mountain will outshine your basic skaven slaves and clan rats. Due to this, it is recommended that you build up your army with some of the skaven's many choices of ranged weapons. That or you can wait till Krakadrak sends an army outside their settlements and attempt an ambush. Once you've dealt with these dwarfs, you'll only need to worry about slightly armored Norskans and even your most basic troops can deal with them with these in masses. Frot the Unclean's unique faction mechanic and effects is the Flesh Laboratory. The Flesh Laboratory is Frot's area where he experiments on his people to strengthen his army to be mutilated monsters. On top of this he uses it to grow new horrors to build up his army fast using growth juices. Frot can next shape his army however he wishes with a variety of different augments that buff his units. This does come with a negative side. If Frot attempts to augment his units too much and fast, they will start to become unstable. Each augmentation gives a percentage chance of a unit becoming unstable. Unstable units start taking damage when their health drops below a certain point. Once your unit is too unstable for your own liking, you can recycle this unit to give you raw material. So even defect units have a purpose. You can replace the recycled units with the unit's growth in your growth vats tanks. The units in these growth vats become better quality units the longer you wait and the more growth juices you gather. Growth juices is collected in multiple ways. I found it easy to gather this via battles. Each battle gives you a select amount of growth juice. These growth units work similar to Regiment of Renown. You can instantly recruit these units into an army without having to wait. Though these units are free and don't go back to your growth vat pool after they die or you get rid of them. The Flesh Laboratory can be upgraded over time to give you faction different buffs. These units cost gold food uh, but also can cost you mutants. Mutants are gained via growth vats. Frot's faction effects give all your characters a 10% increase to their health, as well as being immune to mountain attrition. Makes sense as you will need to fight in the mountains of the north. On top of this, Frot's faction gets a 50% cox reduction to building breeding stocks, pits of the Patmaster, force feeding chambers, and laboratory buildings. Most of Frot's level ups are focused on his growth juices and buffing them rare ogres and horrors. At level 14, he himself gets access to a brood horror mount. A brood horror being one of the new units to come into the game, but more on that later. Frot's quests are focused on gaining his unique weapons from the lore, Creature Killer, a modified thing catcher that gives him more bonuses versus large units, and the Whip of Domination, which gives his rat ogres and horrors more leadership and his army more attack and charge bonus. Later on, you can even get magical attacks. Frot himself gives him armor, his army a 20% upkeep reduction and a plus 10 armor to wolf rats, rat ogres, mutant rat ogres, brood horrors, and hell pit abominations. Lastly, he also gives a passive regeneration ability. Like most of his level ups, all of the unit C buffs are the same. You will see Frot either on his brood horror mount or on foot. He's a pretty good fire overall, not a ton of armor, but with a decent bit of melee attack, which is armored piercing and has bonus versus large. So you probably want him to use him to take on the bigger units, and he does have regeneration, so it does make him overall more tougher to take out. Pop him on the brood horror, and he gains poison attacks and gains incredible amounts of speed. His abilities consist of Master Controller for a constant aura that buffs leadership and defense as well as Remolded, which is a 24 second heal that also buffs the attack by 24 and adds more leadership. This only works on clan, clan Molder monsters. Lastly, he has a Beast Pack, which spawns in a unit of Rat Ogres that degrade over time. This of course has limited uses and as mentioned earlier, he has access to Creature Killer in multiplayer for even bigger bonuses versus large. Coming into the game with Frot is a selection of new units, a new Patmaster hero, and Gorich, Frot's most successful experiment. Gorich is a rat ogre with a human mind, once servant Archaon. He disobeyed him and led his troops and attacked on the Empire, which also led his tribe to destruction. After this, Gorich was given to Frot for his experiments. 
Gorich is a heavily armoured in game with 70 armour and the armour trait. He has a lot of weapon strength and weapon damage, though his melee defence is quite low. Good leadership and a reasonably fast with a good charge bonus. He has armoured piercing attacks as well as anti infantry for that bonus versus troops while also applying terror. The abilities he has access to is Blood Shield for a constant aura of a 15% resistance to magic. Warp Frenzy for a 29 second self buff that increases armoured piercing and base weapon damage by a big old 25% and plus 24 to his melee attack, quite a good buff. Lastly he has Evisceration for a huge AOB attack good for getting in and messing blobs of units up. The items that he has is Crown of Command to make him unbreakable, a very strong trait to have and Sword of Anti Heroes for a 40 second buff to self that increases his armoured piercing and base weapon dance damage by a third for 25%. He wants to mess everyone's day up. As well as Gorich, the other new hero is the Patmaster. The Patmaster is a support specialist. Not very strong as a frontline unit, but has nice abilities and items to help the entire army out. Similar to Frot, he can be seen riding into battle on a Brood Horror, which can help him improve his effectiveness in combat. His abilities are running with the pack for constant health regeneration to mold and monsters while he's in melee, shock color for plus 24 to monsters melee attack and increase to its leadership. And for items he has Skaven Brew for a buff to melee attack and base weapon damage but with a reduction to armour. Lastly he has Scry and Stone which is a small buff to leadership and a 22% increase to damage resistance. In the campaign the Patmaster can also spawn Wolf Rats, a very good supportive character. Wolf Rats are a very fast unit great for getting around the enemy flanks with high amounts of speeds that can take out backline artillery or bog down archers. They have armour piercing magical attacks and vanguard deployment. As well as the normal wolf rats, we have poison wolf rats. These guys are nothing majorly special, but they poison can definitely help slow some units down. They do have scurry wave for more speed. Next up, we have the mutant rat ogre. Rather than being in a pack, this big boy is a single entity monster. It has fairly high melee attack and a good charge bonus, but lacks good armor and good defense. Once again, it has armor piercing as well as magical attacks. It's an anti infantry specialist and has frenzy to increase its damage potential. It also causes terror and fear. One thing to note is this is a shock unit. You want to be cycle charging with him to get the most value out of it. At least in my time using him, sending him into melee and leaving him in melee didn't really produce that much results. Once I started charging him back and forth, the kills increased. The last new unit we have is some I have briefly mentioned earlier, and that is the Brood Horror. The Brood Horror is an incredibly fast monster, it's like a big mole rat thing. It has armor piercing and poison stacks with a decent melee attack and weapon strength and a very good charge bonus. It causes terror and fear as well as regenerates health. To put the icing on the cake it also has frenzy for increased melee attack and damage and even more charge bonus. It doesn't have a lot of armor or defense so it does have a lot of damage but gets stuck in melee for too long and it will die fast. Lastly, as Deathblow, when it's killed, it can get one last smack at the enemy before it dies. This is a quite a fun unit with a beautiful face. Frot overall is a very fun lord to play. With his flesh lab, he can augment even the weakest unit and make it an annoyance to deal with. What do you think of Frot? Are you going to clip bane him? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and if you want, subscribe too. I'll be your best friend. Thanks for watching.